Welcome back to this lovely spring day. It is the 1st of October here in New Zealand, which by my reckoning is the equivalent of the 1st of April in the UK. Lambing is well on the way over here. You can see plenty of ewes and lambs in the background. I'm actually here on a Saturday because I'm joining a local farmer. He's going to take us around on his lambing beat uh, and we're going to talk about Kiwi lambings and some of the differences, some of the similarities to a UK lambing. You guys really seem to enjoy the lambing vlogs back at home in the UK. So I'm hoping you'll find this one interesting as well. Um, yeah, we'll talk about everything. Just get a bit of crack. I can open some gates for Fraser. It'd be like being a student again. Can't see a lambing shed anywhere, but we'll wait for Fraser and we'll see what the crack is. How's it going? Got your sunnies on. Dog's got a jacket on. Yeah. There we go. The lambing weather so far for this part of the world has actually been very good and no better than today. We really couldn't have picked a better day to go out on the lambing beat. By UK standards, Fraser and his family here are running a pretty big operation. More details on that later. As with any outdoor lambing system, the weather really makes all the difference and on a day like today, you can't fault it. In this vlog, we'll not only find out a bit more about a kiwi lambing, but also a bit more specifically about what sheep this farm is running, how many and in what system. And for some added spice, we'll see what we can find on this lambing beat in particular. Traditionally, this would have been a big beef and sheep area, but over the last 20 years or so, for a number of different reasons, there's been a big shift to dairy and most of Fraser's neighbors now are dairy farmers. You can see that in the quality of the ground these guys are running. You can see just how green and lush that grass is for relatively early on in the spring. Of course, there's a lot of careful management that goes into that as well. Everything from managing the nutrients in the soil to rotating the stock ground to optimally grow that grass. And it's that fantastic grass that allows these sheep to thrive. Just look at these very, very competitive lambs. So, Fraser, we were chatting away there while the bike was going. Yeah. Uh, but walk us through the system, like, just, just your farm. So, so there's yourself. And my father. And your father, so it's a fa sort of family affair? Yes, yeah, yeah. A fat one. And my mother, is, she's working as well. Uh-huh. Um, so she does the books and checks stock and then sort of looks after the home. And, and so between the three of you, managing all that, what sort of stock numbers are you running? So there's, there's 4,000 sheep. Okay. So about 3,000 ewes and 1,000 hoggets and then 60 odd cattle. Yep. So you're trading, you got 15, uh, 12 cows and the rest is traded. Like stocking cattle, like the UK probably call them store cattle. So the ones yeah. you're, you're growing on yeah. store so cattle. finish, yeah. So you see like at the moment, the paddock's like nice and green and you've yep. got a high metabolizable energy. Yep. So it'll dive as it goes into seed. Uh -huh. So in order to reduce the seed, we adjust stock numbers and pressure with cattle to keep so you, the tops off. So you can sort of flex that to keep use the cattle as a tool almost to yes, keep yeah. the grass good for the sheep. Yeah, and it reduces it, the amount of tractor hours with mowing. Yeah. And the, the sheep people here will be pretty interested like online to know what sort of sheep you're running. So it's, it's a Romney it's a Romney and Coopworth cross. Okay. Um so we sort of just work between the two rams, so it's yeah. basically a composite breed. Yeah. And yeah they're pretty they do pretty well. What does the does each breed bring something different to the table, or are they very similar? You just getting a bit of hybrid vigor out of it, or yeah, probably more hybrid vigor. And uh, the Coopworths are uh, um, facial eczema resistant rams. Ah, right, okay. Because so, that's something we don't have in the UK facial eczema. Yeah, we don't have it down here. Okay, but you know it might make its way down here. Oh, it gets warmer. Yeah, maybe. Interesting. <laughs> On a morning like gorgeous morning like this. What are your main jobs? Are you just going around checking anything that needs assistance? Are you yeah, any, try move things anywhere or? Yeah, so we'll adjust stock numbers based on what the feed's like in each mm -hmm. paddock. Mm -hmm. um, we'll put prolapses back in. We'll pick up any with sleepy sickness. Okay, or, that'd be twin lamb, like a ketosis? Yeah. Yeah, sleepy yeah. sickness. But there's only been 
four or five of those this year. Awesome. So you're running 4,000, did you say? Yeah. How many do you think you assist in a year? Maybe 150. Okay, yeah. Of the, of, of the ewes and probably, yeah, no, and then yeah, probably another 150 of the hoggets. Yeah, okay. I'd say, but I've, I've, if you have the hoggets up to closer to 80 kilos, yeah. we'll assist like 20. <laughs> like... It's amazing. Eh? They, so it's just those smaller end of the hoggets or the ewe lambs, right? So that you're, that yeah. you maybe have to assist a bit more. Yeah, well, it's, it's, you've got to. It's just trying to feed them and keep them up to weight through the winter. So we have them at like sixty to seventy percent of their mature weight. Yeah. Which is around forty nine kilos at mating in May, mm -hmm. May June, and then um, we try and get them uh, closer to about. Uh, 60 yeah 60 odd kilos of body weight and then they'll have 12 12 kilos of you know fetus and you know afterbirth and that yeah yeah, yeah. to spit out yeah that'll be like the average but if you can get them up at 80 it's amazing yeah. drive through and, and look yeah <laughs> i've been impressed by how big the sheep are here because you're average i mean you're mature you size what would that be because they're pretty they're decent size that'd be that'd be uh 70 to 80 yeah, so it's probably somewhere yes. in the middle of that. Yeah. Like, yeah, no, interesting. And we were chatting earlier just on the bike about, again, I was driving around when I first got here, a bit perplexed by the... Sh so they're all, all these sheep are shorn pre-lambing, right? But you leave the bellies on them for this time of year. Yeah, So they've got something to... Inch we'll try and get a shot of that, but like where they, they've got that layer of insulation. Because, I mean, do you, have you ever lambed a sheep inside? No. No. <laughs> Is there anyone you can think of in the locality you land sheep inside? No, well, it's the rest of it's dairy farms. Yeah, well, that's the thing. There's a lot of dairy farms. You can see sort of the ground here. It's good dairy country as well. I'm joining Fraser while he's checking two farms today. There's the home farm where they keep the slightly higher maintenance sheep. So that's the young ones, the old ones, and the skinny ones. And then we're going to go on to the top farm where they have a greater number of the middle-aged, well-conditioned, well-seasoned ewes who are probably going to need much less assistance. It's not very long before we find someone in need of assistance. This ewe has become cast, and so she needs a hand delivering her lamb. So this ewe, she's not going anywhere because she's cast. Nah, she won't. yeah, she won't. She won't go anywhere. Uh, well, she's just about to lamb her. Uh, she's had a, a dead lamb, unfortunately, but uh, there's another one in there, so fingers crossed um, we'll have a live one. And Fraser, as every model farmer does, and will, wears a glove when he's on his feet. Yeah. I don't know. You know. You've got to keep your hands clean, don't you? Absolutely, yeah. There we go. So a bit, a bit stressed out from that colour, but yeah, with we'll that first one being long. There you go. <laughs> Come on, son. Get going. I should have put glove on myself. Yeah, you should have. <laughs> That's it. There you go. Sit up a bit. There you go. You like him there? Not the best one they can. We're over. Oh, yeah, well. So, so Fraser there is just giving, so she has some anti-inflammatory, she has some painkiller and she's also getting some, is that be some sort of penicillin? Yeah, intracillin. Intracillin in this case, uh, just because you had a hand in her, try and keep things as clean as possible but inevitably there's some contamination isn't there? Yes, and, and I think we've marked her here so we know that she's just had one. Yep. And then we'll keep an eye on her. We've got to set her up back on her I'll belly. We'll just uh, roll her over in a minute. Ed? Yeah, it does, absolutely. As we get further around that first farm, there are a couple of ewes who need a hand. It immediately becomes clear that when you're outdoor lambing, you need to be pretty nimble, pretty quick on your feet to catch these girls. Because despite being in the throes of labour themselves, they remain pretty agile. This is why you don't see many fat shepherds. Yeah. Right, get off. Get off. 
Get up. Get up. Yeah, I've got the gloves. They've got wool on them, that's a bit easier when they've got wool. Yes, yeah, something to grab onto, eh? So that is the thing with outdoor lambing, you have to be pretty fit, don't you, Fraser, I guess? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> have to have good knees. Yeah, wasn't it? I just <laughs> missed her with the crook. There. Yeah. It's quite tight, that one. <laughs> Might just take it down. Right, so yeah. Push that out. She's got a bit of swollen head there, can't you? Yeah, just a wee bit. He's a lot better. Yeah, he's going to be fine. There you go. Right, there you go. This is, these are good, good size, these lambs are not too big. Fantastic, so you're aiming. Yeah, because they're probably what? Four kilos? There's probably another one in there. Oh no, no no. <laughs> <laughs> two's plenty. Yeah, two's plenty. She's just a big girl. She is. Yeah, she's in pretty good neck too, this one. Very good. Awesome. There you go. So, I'm just gonna back off me. See, see she, shouldn't, she shouldn't need anything, eh? No, that, because I think... Because it's, it's... I mean, it's all... It's all a bit arbitrary, right? But I say generally, if I go in more than my wrist, or more, sort of more than up to there, I'll give them penicillin. Or like for a prolonged time, I yeah. get a bit of penicillin, some anti-inflammatory. But that wasn't particularly traumatic for her. No, like it wasn't like a, you were really writhing on and having to like push things back. And I think she'll be fine. Mm, that's, right. that's always been my thoughts, anyway. Because yeah, it's just trying to use least like as little as possible antibiotics. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. it's incredible. I was doing uh, like an RVM for someone the other day who had like. Similar number, maybe slightly more each sheep even, and they use like one 200 ml bottle of intracillin. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's quite something. Yeah. But I know it's, it's sort of the, the thing you'd say in the UK as well, it's probably over here, is as much as you need and as little as necessary. I just might let her stay down. That's, oh yeah, that's a good trick as well. I'll push them, put them there. It looks like she, I'm going to jinx it actually. There we go. And Spike got a bit of work there as well. Where do you normally stick your foot? Oh, up this way. Like a joust. That was a semi fast a bit, isn't it? Yeah, holding on to something. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. You've got a few big ones. Yeah, it's faces. It's oh, it's actually yeah. It's not too bad that one. It's just quite a big lamb. Oh, leaf. Leaf. Yeah, it's a big lamb. She probably would have got that out. How many times a day do you check them, Fraser? Generally. How many times do you check? How many times do you check a day? How do I just farm twice and the other one once. Okay. Yeah, because the other one's got the better ewes. This has got the older ewes. Yes. Yeah. It's quite good, eh? Look at that. That is a big lamb. 
is quite big, eh? Hey? Long. Mm. Yeah, so that's a wee bit distressed, isn't it? Yeah, the, the meconium. Yeah. So yeah, they only pass up when they're a bit stressed, exactly. She's got a very good udder. She should grow very well, this land. Very good. The only problem is you, I'll try and slide your uh, crook underneath it. There you go, lovely. Another success. Yeah. <laughs> so that's me, that surprised me a little bit. Actually, I came to the to New Zealand thinking it'd be extremely probably on the part of Australia in terms of the extensiveness and the like hands off. But actually, this is probably much the same as an outdoor British army. You know, it's, it's you're not you're, you're still going around them, still going around them full stop. <laughs> Sounds. <Yeah. laughs> You know, you don't just gather them in at the end of landing and say, right, that's how many ones we've got. Well, we're lucky we don't have the predators that Australia yeah. has. No, right, like flocks of yeah. change whole areas from the sheep and cattle. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we're pretty lucky. We don't have, we've got foxes, we've got badgers. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, but we don't have, I mean, then you go to the States and they talk about having things like bears and wolves and coyotes. And you realise how easy we've got it. Yeah. So, yeah, we do. Okay, so, no. We'll Leave her be. Get Rachel in a bit. Rachel. She's <laughs> alright. Sweet. Uh, I'll run and get that. Oh, I have to say, that we actually, I mentioned in a previous video, we, a lot of the names around here are Scottish, and we're actually just down the road from Kelso, aren't we? Yes. And Kelso in the UK is maybe 45 minutes from where the practice is, has the biggest one day sheep sale in Europe. Uh. Uh, in the back in the UK, yeah. Uh, no, no sheep sale on this Kelso, there is there? No, no. not yet. They probably not used yet. to be. Probably. But they had a um, they had a, like a little lot of floods there. It used to be a town, like a full town there. Yeah. And they got flooded like three years, like quite close together. And yeah. It just ended the town. Before we leave the first farm, we go and check on that ewe who was cast. That very first ewe we assisted, unfortunately. She's taken the huff, probably something to do with being cast has upset her, and she's not really looking after that lamb. So a little bit more intervention required. If you farm sheep in the UK, you're probably familiar with headstocks, where we hold the ewes for a short period of time to try and get them to take that lamb, try and persuade them. Here, it's a very similar idea. They get tethered to a fence just for a short time, so they learn to love that lamb. And then once they've learned that, happy days, everyone's a winner. Yeah. Bad girl. That rope, that twine looks like it's seen some service. <laughs> yeah, it's just spear a bit out of the front. Bit of circulation there, that's good. <laughs> So you leave her just here tethered to this, yeah, just so she the, can't run away for a lamb. Just for the day, and then we'll check why the grit, see how she's going with the lamb. Do you mind jumping on the bike and just starting her up? Yeah, sure. Oh. So we'll see, like you say, she'll be tethered to that just for the day, or the day. And just until she learns to love that. But much the same as like a, in the UK, if they're inside, you'd have um, like a stocks, you put their head in stocks. 
Yeah, you would drop them yeah. as well, a small shed, but like, you know, they get the trailer to put her in there, so... Yeah. On, a, on, a, on a day like this today as well, it's probably better off outside. Though. Yeah. Insane. I was so pleased with the footage I got from the second farm because there's plenty more going on there. I didn't want to throw any of that away at the same time I didn't want to make this video over long and it probably is already. So I'm going to wrap this up in a second video probably out later this week. We go up to the second farm, there's far fewer interventions to make but we talk about some really interesting things, we talk about soil quality, under sowing winter crops, we have a look at the cattle and meet the most friendly calf I've ever met all in the glorious sun and with a fantastic backdrop. So stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching guys. If you enjoyed that, don't be afraid to give the video a thumbs up. Drop me a comment about what you thought about the vlog. And if you haven't already, go ahead, click that subscribe button, ring the little bell next to it. That means you won't miss any more of the upcoming New Zealand Chronicles, including this next landing video. I will see you next time.